By the way, for pe- if people are listening and you're a big fan of the NCAA, you might want to turn off the podcast right now because I don't know. I, I don't know of anybody <laughs> a fan a of fan the of the NCAA. NCAA. Yeah, no, I think you're right about that. So one one of my problems with the NCAA has always been number one. I don't think they enforce the rules consistently across the board. The consistency in the interpretation of the rules as the well, they, different schools. Yeah, yeah. and they, there's no, as you say, there's no, that's just like on the waivers. There are no consistency on the waiver. Yeah. Now, the attorney was Little Rock, Arkansas, and he, all the students went to him. He handled their cases and all the students got waivers. Yeah. Guess who hired him? The NCAA. The NCAA hired him because, in my opinion, they couldn't beat him, so they hired him. Well, can I tell you another story about that? When I was at the University of Texas Law School, I worked for probably the most prominent federal procedures law professor in the country. He'd actually Charles Allen Wright. Charles Allen Wright, for sure, and represented Richard Nixon and Watergate. I worked for uh, Professor Wright, who's dead now, but I worked for him for a year in law school, and he was on the NCA Infractions Committee. And he controlled it. And he was at the University of Texas, and he liked the University of Texas football. Matter of fact, he had a flag football team called Legal Eagles that won the I was on that team, too. And he used to recruit A&M and UT football players to the law school. <laughs> but, but is it surprising that certain schools get treated differently than other schools when that kind of thing is going on. And coach, I, I got to ask you this question because it sounds to me like you've been pushing back against the NCA your whole career. And maybe that's one of the reasons they've come after you. Yeah, we can't, I'm not going to get into that, but uh, I did send a message to one of them. I said, for 22 years, you had, all my phone calls, all my travel, yeah. all my check-in account, all my expense accounts. Now, either I'm the smartest guy in the world, or <laughs> you're the dumbest. <laughs> I believe it's a little of both. Yeah. Yeah. So and you were telling me earlier in the sixties with Pell Grants that all the way back to the 60s. Yeah, tell us about that story real quick, because I'd never heard of that. It wasn't a Pell Grant back then. Back then, it was called Basic Educational Opportunity Grant, B-E-O-G. A track star at the University of Kansas sued the NCAA because the NCAA would not allow the student to receive their full BEOG, which is now the Pell Grant, at that time. Now, they would receive the full from the government, but the government would pay it, but it would pay it to the school, and the the school would only allow him to get what the NCAA allowed. What happened was the NCAA was sued and forced to give all the money that was rightfully so to the students. And fast forward, the same thing. It's been that way for years. And even in the, the, the Pell Grant, the NCAA, the Big Ten, Pac-12, back then Pac-10, and Mid-American, voted in a block vote to do away with the dormitories and the cafeterias. At that time, the Southwest Conference, the Big Eight, the the SEC, the ACC, had the advantage because they had athletic dormitories and athletic cafeterias. Yeah. Now, what happened was the Big Ten, Pac-10, Mid-American voted because they did not have the advantage. The group over here had the advantage. Yeah. 
So they got the help of the NCAA. They pushed it through. They took the the meal plan away, the cafeterias and the dormitories. It gave them the advantage because now the, you only received breakfast and lunch. You were able one meal a day, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, what meal. And at Mississippi State at the time, you had $3 for breakfast, $5 for lunch, and $7 for dinner. So tell me where a 300 pounder can eat breakfast for yeah, dinner. Absolutely. But it gave the, the schools that were in the metropolitan areas, i.e. Southern Cal, UCLA, Stanford, Washington, you can go on and on, more money because of the room and board. Yeah. But it took away from the SEC. They wanted, they're trying to make it in their mind equal. And there's no such thing as being equal. What they spend at the University of Alabama and what they spend at Troy State, that's not equal. And, and it's it, never going to be equal. No. Never going to be equal.